صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى أهل بيت التيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد This is the second episode or part to the series of lectures regarding backbiting Now I mentioned in the first lecture that there are different ways that we can backbite it's not just through spoken word that we can backbite through written word, through action and sometimes through not saying something or by saying that you know what, it's better I don't say anything by even saying this to somebody then you in a way are agreeing or letting them know that you've also seen such a problem from that person so we then looked regarding the different reasons why we backbite. I brought up six reasons why we backbite and they can be seen in the first lecture. In this lecture I plan to look over a few eyes of the Qur'an and to open them up a little bit so we can understand what Allah is saying and why has he mentioned it in such a way? What was his reason for using such words when it comes to backbiting or such examples when it comes to backbiting? Inshallah, we'll take a brief look at these. Just as the other sins have been mentioned in the Qur'an and Allah has warned us to stay away from them and not to commit them, backbiting is no different. Allah has also mentioned this and given us advice regarding it to steer clear from such an action. Inshallah, we'll take a look at a couple of them now. The first one is... Surah 49, ayah number 12 Allah says A'udhu billahi minna shaitan al-rajim Wa la yaghta ba'zakum ba'za This means and neither allow yourselves to speak ill of one another behind your backs Now this shows that it's generalizing for everyone It's a general law It doesn't say and men make sure you don't speak about women behind their backs or women make, make sure you don't speak about men I know, I know a lot of the, um, the alims like to liken or to put the sin of backbiting on women, saying that women, because they speak so much, then they commit backbiting so often. But this isn't the case, otherwise Allah would have said, women, be careful of backbiting. He's put it out generally for everybody, because men backbite about men, about women, about children, children to adults, adults to children women about men, women about women, as in it's for everyone. It doesn't matter whether you're a teacher or a scholar or an accountant or a businessman or an engineer, everybody does it. Everybody does it, so Allah is saying, be careful, be aware that you do not backbite about people. In the same verse, Allah continues and says, Allah billahi minash shaitan al-rajim, ayuhibba ahadakum an yakkula lahma akhihe mayta He's saying that would any of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? Would you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? Now, we can't just pass over this and say, okay, so backbiting is like eating the flesh of a dead person. Oh, it doesn't taste very good. It's probably rotten. No, no. There's a much deeper meaning behind this, which we will now touch on, inshallah. The first is that Allah mentions dead. He mentions meat, flesh. He says, would you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? Now, meat here is a metaphor. It, it may well literally mean meat of a dead person, but it also has another meaning that when you're born, you're not born a 60, 70 kilo adult, are you? You're born as a little child, maybe weighing less than a kilo. And over the many years you put this weight on, your flesh grows. Allah says that by eating the flesh of a dead person, the flesh, it's as if you've eaten their respect. See, respect is likened to flesh in the sense that Someone who's born doesn't just instantly gain success and status and respect. 
it takes many, many years for them to build up their name, their status, their respect in people's eyes. And Allah is saying that by doing this, by backbiting, you are ruining their status, their respect in other people's eyes, their flesh, in other words. Now, also regarding this line, would any of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? He likens... Why does Allah say brother here? Let's first touch on this. Why does Allah say brother? Why not would any of you eat the flesh of a dead person? Why does Allah say dead brother? You see, Imam Ali salam, he says that everyone is your brother, full stop. Everyone is your brother. Now, whether they are your brother in faith or your brother in humanity, they are still your brother. So by Allah saying your brother, would you like to eat the dead flesh of your brother? He's trying to wake us up. He's trying to tell us, look, where is your sensitivity gone? Where is your feelings? Where is your humanity gone that you're willing to eat your own brother? Now, whether they're your brother in faith or your brother in humanity, you're still willing to eat them. What's happened to you? Even animals don't eat each other, and yet you've come and, well, animals do eat each other. But you know what I'm saying? The human beings have stooped so low to, of a level that they're willing to eat each other openly. Another beautiful part of this verse is the fact that Allah likens or chooses to use a dead person as opposed to an alive person. There are many reasons for the well, I can pick out two reasons from this. The first is that try and eat the flesh of an alive person, someone walking in the street. Just run up to them, jump on their back and try and bite their back. Believe me, you won't come back without a black eye, without a few teeth missing. They'll shake you off, they'll beat you, they'll defend themselves in any way possible, they'll shout and scream at you. They'll do whatever they can to get you off from you biting their flesh. But now if I was to tell you, go and eat the flesh of a dead person. Now, I should have a disclaimer here on the bottom of the screen saying, don't try this at home, obviously. But if you were to go and, you know, take somebody who's dead, and you were to bite them, they wouldn't even flinch. They wouldn't shout. They wouldn't scream. They wouldn't give you a black eye or knock your teeth out. They wouldn't swear at you. They'd just continue to lie there absolutely silent. You'd be able to take a chunk out of a dead person, but not out of an alive person. It's a very serious point here that Allah is saying that person who is absent from the conversation that you're having, from that meeting, from that gathering, and you're speaking about them behind their back, it's as if they're dead. They're not there to defend themselves. They're not there to shout and push you off and give you a black eye or give you as much as you're giving them. They're not there to defend themselves. So it's like you're, you're eating a dead person. Otherwise Allah would say the flesh of a person. He wouldn't mention dead. In other words, he's saying that that person is not there and this is what you're doing. And another reason for using the word dead is that anyone who has been in an accident, who has had some of their flesh removed, I'm sorry to be so gruesome and graphic, but it really does help us to realise the reason for Allah choosing. I mean, there are many reasons, I'm just picking up this much. If you've been in an accident and you've had your flesh removed or a piece of your um, body cut open, after some a while, scar tissue will fill up the flesh will grow again. It will heal itself. Allah chooses a dead person because if, God forbid, something was, you know, you, someone dies in an accident and they're wounded so deeply, when they're taken to the morgue, when they're buried, that wound doesn't close. That wound doesn't, the flesh doesn't regrow. The whole remains there. And Allah has likened flesh to respect, saying that, if you were to backbite about somebody who is alive, in other words, somebody who's there in that gathering, they are able to regrow their flesh. They are able to regrow their respect. They are able to defend themselves and say, no, that's not what happened, actually. It was like this. Or they're able to say, you know, to defend themselves, to defend their respect and their status. 
Whereas somebody who's dead is, in other words, somebody who's absent from this gathering and you backbiting about them while they are absent, they're not able to regrow that respect or to defend themselves, defend that respect. So their wound remains open. So these are the reasons why Allah puts it in this way. We just read it, we just go over it. We don't think about what Allah is actually saying by this. Now some have also said that on the Day of Judgment, Allah will actually fill your mouth with the flesh of a dead person. Now whether that's true or not, I don't know. It may well be one of the punishments. However, Allah is putting it like this for us to see how much damage we're doing. How much of a disadvantage that person is that they're absent from the meeting. They are dead. They are not here. It's very beautiful the way he puts it because you can learn so much from it. Now, lastly in that sentence, Allah uses the word فَكَرَهْتُمُ which means that you will certainly dislike it, you will certainly loathe it, you'll hate it. If you were to, he's saying, would you like to eat the flesh of a dead brother? And then he says, you'll absolutely hate it. So don't do it. He's warning us. He's telling us, don't even try it. Now some of us, on the very basic level, we think, oh, would I eat a dead person? No, I wouldn't, so I shouldn't backbite them. And that's enough for some of us. We accept it. We say, okay, I accept. But Allah has put many meanings behind it. That's why he's used this. In another chapter, 24, verse number 19, Allah says, billah He's saying that, really, as for those who like to hear foul slander, This is a big point, as in, sin is a sin once you've committed it. For instance, drinking alcohol is a sin once you've drunk the alcohol. Killing someone is a sin once you've killed them. Most sins, if not all sins, are sins only once you commit them. Whereas backbiting is one of the very few sins that before committing it, just thinking about it or liking it, is a sin. Liking it is just as bad as committing it. These are Allah's words in the Quran. Allah says that, really, as for those who like to hear foul slander. And then he goes on to say, فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ In other words, really, as for those who like to hear foul slander spread against those who have attained faith, a grievous suffering awaits them in this world and the life to come. Backbiting, as I mentioned in the first lecture, is a very, very serious thing that we have maybe, I have not understood fully. I have just thought, oh, it's another sin like every other sin, you know, we'll just ask for forgiveness and it's finished. No, it has... It's a lot deeper than that. It's a lot, it's detrimental to our progress and status in the eyes of Allah. Allah is saying that if you like it, even just liking ruining someone's respect, speaking about them behind their back, even just liking it, you'll receive not only a painful chastisement in this world, but the world to come. This is how much of a serious sin it is. And lastly, in Surah 104, in the first verse, Allah says, "Aldo billahi min ash-shaytan rajim, wa'ilu nikulli humazatil lamaza." As if to put the cherry on the cake, Allah says, "Woe unto every slanderer and fault finder." So again, He's just reminding us that I've spoke about this before in the Quran. So woe be to you! Don't even think about committing such a thing. Now, these are the few verses that the Qur'an has to say about slandering or speaking about somebody behind their back, backbiting in other words, and we can see how serious it is. 
and how much meaning these verses actually have. They're not just something that Allah has said and passed over by, or we don't just, as we just read it and pass. We shouldn't. We should realize the meaning of it and realize how much damage we are doing by committing such a sin. I ask Allah that, inshallah, He helps us to remember how much of a serious sin this is and what damage it can do to people, not only others but ourselves. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ahli bayt al-Tayyibin al-Tahmin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.